A Fish Called Wanda, 1988, directed by Charles Crichton, written by John Cleese. When we're caught off guard by a shocking image, laughter is an appropriate reaction as we digest what exactly unfolded. This film draws you in with moments of nonsensical buffoonery that exists as a result of selfish motives. It's important to give context given the film's relationship with the classic British comedy troupe, Monty Python. John Cleese, who wrote the film and stars as Archie Leach, was one of the founding members of Monty Python alongside Michael Palin, who plays Ken Pyle. Everybody from the creators of South Park, The Simpsons, and Austin Powers were inspired by the sheer absurdity of Monty Python. Trey Parker and Matt Stone, in particular, have cited the group's integrity to their own flavor of comedy as a source of inspiration. Matt and I met and got along so well because we were just pure Python freaks, mm -hmm. you know. And, I mean, you can watch those those episodes and you realize they were just in their own world and they just didn't give a f about what what <laughs> the, the normal comedy thing to do was. And I think that that's what. From the beginning with South Park, we are like, we gotta do that, you know? Their style of comedy was so distinct that the term Pythonesque was termed to describe their subversive shenanigans. Even the term spam, used in the context of unwanted emails, was derived from a sketch that the group performed called, well, you know, spam. Much of the fan base in the early days comprised of nerds who appreciated their mixture of social commentary, historical references, and just pure silliness. While the sketches were rooted in intellectual concepts, they never came off as patronizing. Cleese had claimed that anti-authoritarianism was deeply ingrained into Python. Sketches would often end abruptly or they would directly address the audience. You have to accept a certain level of hyperbole to understand their intentions. Knowing the essence of Monty Python primes you in understanding the gags that make up A Fish Called Wanda. If you want to explore more of Monty Python, a plethora of their sketches are available on YouTube as well as their theatrical releases, The Holy Grail, Life of Brian, and The Meaning of Life. We get introduced to Archie Leach, who is beyond miserable. His wife wants nothing to do with him, and his daughter is constantly venting out her frustrations onto him. Meanwhile, Wanda, Otto, Ken, and George all band together to rob a pair of jewels worth $20 million. The heist is successful, and the loot is stashed in a vault on the outskirts of London. Being that we're dealing with vandals, the group dynamic is fractured once the loot is moved elsewhere by George. It's here where the film exposes each member's selfishness as they all conspire to claim the jewels without the other one knowing. When Archie first encounters Wanda, it's the first time that he feels alive from his domestic dread. However, it's based off of false pretenses as Wanda only uses Archie to get closer to the loot. There's no pushback to her manipulation from a character standpoint. It would have been nice to see her change from her thievery, but in the end, she remains the same. When we finally see Archie and Wanda end up together on a flight to Rio, it's clear that the film was setting up a twisted love story the whole time. Wanda is triggered into ecstasy by the mere pronunciation of a foreign language, whether it be Italian or Russian. Benito Mussolini. If there's one reason to go see this film, it's Kevin Klein's performance, of which he received the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor, a rare feat considering how comedy is never taken seriously. The best part of that particular acceptance speech was watching the late River Phoenix jump up in joy, having just lost to Klein in that same category. It was the ultimate expression of humility. Otto is the embodiment of the phrase idiot savant. Within combat and weaponry, he's quite skilled, but in every other facet, he's an imbecile. Calling him stupid only makes his blood boil and flaunt his knowledge of Nietzsche's beyond good and evil. There are actions he does that seem random but follow his deranged logic. What are you doing? I'm thinking! He is the embodiment of the blind arrogance within the general American stereotype and its disdain for the culture of British nobility. Klein's physicality was paramount in emphasizing Otto's aggravation. His short temper is defined by a series of incidents where he cuts people off the road after calling them asshole. Asshole! 
his envy of Wanda's promiscuity derails the goal of getting closer to the loot. The delusions of grandeur mixed with violent outbursts make Otto just a pleasure to watch. Ken is a animal lover and feels like they don't let you down, unlike the rest of the group that end up betraying each other. He is tasked with whacking the old lady, who is the reason why George is held up in court. In every assassination attempt, he ends up murdering all three of her Yorkies, which leaves him devastated. <laughs> Nowadays, it's seen as poor taste for ridiculing someone who has a stutter because it's punching down. Because it's Otto giving Ken a hard time about his stutter, it's a little bit more excusable since Otto represents someone who's completely vulgar. And in this way, the film is not celebrating the ridicule. How very interesting. You're a true vulgarian, aren't you? You're the vulgarian, you fuck! The levity behind the stutter is tied more towards the plot, where important information is needed for the heist, but Ken is the only one that can dispel it. There's a balance in the functions that each character plays. Otto and Ken were the sources of amusement, whereas Archie and Wanda played it straight as to not overshadow the former. In 1989, Dr. Ole Benson, a 56-year-old Danish audiologist reportedly in good health, laughed himself to death while watching this film. This fact alone is supernatural considering the fact that Monty Python had a sketch called The Greatest Joke in the World, which involved a joke that was so funny that anyone who read it would perish from laughing. You might watch this film and find it to be the furthest thing from comedy. Since its release, what we find funny has evolved and dispersed into sub-niche cultures. Podcasts and memes are now the dominant mediums of silly fun. With that being said, you will feel at ease watching this film due to its pace. Nothing feels dragged out or rushed. And that is all for me, so please support the channel, just keep watching the videos, I'd really appreciate it. Good night.